getting started with investing can be really scary because we are talking about our hard-earned money. And if you do the wrong thing, it can really hurt you. And with an economic recession looming, it feels scarier than ever right now. But just because something is scary doesn't mean we can just avoid it. I'm a big believer that the first step in overcoming something that you're unsure about is to talk about it and educate yourself. So let's talk about it. Starting with self-sabotage. Self-sabotage can come in many delicious forms like bad spending habits, living above your means, and taking on bad debt. But what I want to focus on first is that self-doubt. 10 years ago, it was really easy for me to come up with a list of excuses as to why I didn't want to invest. I didn't have time. I didn't really make enough money. It looks complicated and boring. I'm young. Who cares? I'll start when I'm 40. But looking back on it now, I can really recognize that that list was underpinned by this idea that I had about myself at the time, which was that I'm just not smart enough to do it. Math was always my least favorite subject growing up, and I had these doubts about my ability to work with numbers, and that directly impacted my willingness to learn to invest. But I can promise you, no matter how bad you are at math, you can understand and put into practice a few core concepts that will drastically improve your financial future and change your life for the better. And if you have some very basic math skills, if you can multiply and divide and use a spreadsheet, you can become a value investor and learn how to figure out the intrinsic value of a company and determine your strike price. When I started my investing journey, I was so hesitant, but gaining some knowledge helped me to feel comfortable to start practicing. Then that practicing made me feel more confident to do and learn more. And the more that I did, the better I got at it. And honestly, I never thought that I could derive meaning from financial reports or use numbers to understand the story of a business. And for sure, if you would have told me a few years ago that I could use the discounted cash flow method to predict the future value of an investment and determine the price I was willing to pay for that investment today, I would say, what the f is she talking about? But seriously, if I can do it, you can do it too. Remember, if you were smart enough to earn that money, you are smart enough to invest that money. I want to say that again because it is so important. If you are smart enough to earn that money, you are smart enough to invest that money. Now, I'm not just saying to go out there and buy stocks willy-nilly. Take your time, listen to different perspectives, try to learn from others' mistakes, and decide for yourself a strategy that you want to implement. And this leads me to the next big mistake to avoid, which I feel is not having a clear plan for your money. I think that if you aren't clear about what your goals are and what are the tangible steps that you plan to take to reach your goals, you're just setting yourself up for failure. Everyone's personal finance journey is unique and your strategy needs to consider your risk tolerance, how much your desired lifestyle will cost you, your timeline, the amount of money you can contribute to your nest egg, and most importantly, an investing practice that you can commit to doing consistently and over the long term. Maybe that is building a stock portfolio of individual companies. Maybe you want to try the magic formula system that Joel Greenblatt talks about. Maybe you like index investing. Maybe you're into real estate. There are so many ways to improve your financial future, so you don't need to make the mistake of overcomplicating things. Speaking for myself, I feel like one of the better things that I did when I finally decided to start was literally just taking things one bite at a time. I started with really easily digestible content in small doses. I tried to build on the ideas that made sense to me, and I spent more time on the things that I found more difficult. I asked for help when I needed it, and I'm really lucky because uh, me and my husband, Chris, invest together. He's super smart, and having a person in my close circle who's also interested in investing helps to keep me motivated to continue to learn. When it comes to investing, you do not have to jump in with the most complex strategy. Literally, if all that you do is buy an index fund using dollar cost averaging, it is very likely that you will have success in the long term. The process is super simple. You won't have to pay big fees to a money manager and you'll have a diversified portfolio. And by the way, Warren Buffett, who is arguably the best investor of all time, has said on numerous occasions that he thinks that just owning the S&P 500 index fund is the best thing to do for most people. And as a rule of thumb, I listen to anything Warren Buffett has to say. Speaking of listening to what other people have to say, let's talk about a very big mistake that so many people make, which is following bad advice from social media. There are a lot of on TikTok giving terrible advice. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that every finance person on social is a There are definitely some great people out there that I trust and who I feel are sharing really valuable information. But with anything we see, it is our job to assess the quality of that information and decide what is worth listening to and what we should just ignore. There's actually a tool that we use in academic research, which I apply to pretty much 
everything in life, and it's called the CRAP test. It stands for Currency, Relevance, Authority, Accuracy, and Purpose. So when I'm talking about currency, I'm talking about like what is the timeliness of the information, when was it posted, is it out of date, or is it still good? When it comes to relevance, we're talking about, is it relevant to you? Does it answer your particular question? Uh, who's the intended audience? Is the information at an appropriate level? Things like this. Also, have you looked at a variety of resources before determining which one you're actually going to listen to? The first A stands for authority, which is essentially what's the source of the information? Who is the person and what are their qualifications for them to actually be talking about this subject? The next A is for accuracy, so that's pretty self-explanatory. Is it truthful? Is it accurate? Is it correct? Can you verify any of the information from another source or from personal knowledge? And also, are there like red flags, like bad spelling? Are there errors that make you feel like maybe the information isn't gonna be accurate? And finally, P stands for purpose, which is essentially, why does this information exist? What's the reason? Uh, is the purpose to teach, to inform, to entertain? Maybe it's to sell you something or to persuade you. Uh, is the content sponsored? Is the author benefiting in any way from this video? And I'm not saying that sponsored videos are bad because sometimes sponsored videos can be great and they can share wonderful information, but just always keep that in the back of your mind. And the next time you see something on social, you can just ask yourself, is this crap? before you decide if you wanna to listen to it or not. Moving on, I think that another mistake that new investors often make is not taking a holistic approach to their financial health. The name of the channel is Earn More, Spend Less, Invest the Rest for a Reason. The people that I've met in life who do really well financially understand that all of these practices work jointly to build and sustain wealth. The pieces all fit together like cogs in a machine. You have to spend less than you earn in order to have money to invest. You have to create multiple income streams to gain financial security. You have to pick good investments to grow your wealth. And once you get wealthy, you have to continue to make good financial decisions so that you stay wealthy. That's why you'll see me talk about all of these things on our channel, from tips on how to set a budget and save more money, to the side hustles that we're working on, to tutorials on how we value individual companies to add to our stock investment portfolio. Nobody taught this stuff to us when we were growing up, and so having other content creators be honest and transparent about what they were doing was really helpful for us. And that's really the purpose of why we started the channel, just to share what we're doing, uh, what works, what doesn't work, in hopes that sharing our journey can be helpful for you in achieving your own financial success. And I also think that when you're learning to invest, it can be really easy to focus on that one thing that you think is going to be your golden ticket. It would be so nice if there was just one specific linear path or if there was one single action that guarantees success, but it's not that simple. There are several aspects to building wealth. They move, they're connected, they're cyclical, and they're all important. And something extra, extra important, something that is an enormous mistake that you should never do is invest money that you will soon need or money that you cannot afford to lose. I'm talking about your rent money, the savings you've set aside in case of a medical emergency, your kid's college fund. Don't mess around with that. Investing always comes with a risk of losing that money. I'm not saying this to try to scare you. I love investing and it has allowed Chris and I to grow our wealth significantly over the past seven years. But I think it's really important to be honest about the fact that success is not guaranteed. The reason that we're so into value investing is because to me, it's really the only logical strategy that I found that tries to systematically mitigate risk by doing research into an investment to understand its story and value and then buying it at a discount. And by taking this approach, we have always avoided chasing the trends instead of understanding our investments. Thinking back on the past few years, it was really tempting to jump onto investing trends. I feel like everywhere you looked, you saw people making crazy gains in short amounts of time. We knew people who made like 65,000 in a week, but we also know people who have literally lost everything from following those trends. With this technique, sometimes you win big, but you can also lose big. And the reason that Chris and I don't chase the trends is because to Chris and I, this technique is essentially the same thing as gambling with our money. And that is just something I'm not interested in doing. The other key aspect of our value investing strategy is that we have a long-term outlook for measuring success. I think that another mistake to avoid is not giving your investments time to grow. We all want our money to double overnight, but those kind of returns are most often extremely risky. So our approach is consistent and steady. 
the reason we do a bunch of research and carefully select our investments is because we want to be confident in our decisions. We usually have a 10 year timeline when we do our valuations and we have to be willing to give the time necessary to see the growth that we would expect. And in a market like the one we're facing today, I think it is very likely that stock prices will drop. I don't want to live a life where I'm logging into TD Ameritrade every two hours and freaking out if share prices go down on stocks that I own. In fact, we are going to try to benefit from these dropping prices. We're building a watch list of companies we want to own and determining our strike price. So if and when those share prices go down, we will buy them and then give them the necessary time to go back up and grow. All that being said, I also think it's a mistake to just put your stuff on autopilot and not pay attention to your investments. It's important to remember that sometimes the story of an investment can change. You have to pay attention to your investments because you need to know if something fundamental changes that makes your original thesis no longer valid. You may need to exit an investment early to cut your losses, and this is also very important to mitigate your risk. Okay, I've been talking for like a long time now. If you're still here, you rock. Thanks for listening. Um, I just I want to end this list with a little story and what I think is the worst mistake that you can make. Letting your emotions rule your investments. Every mistake Chris and I have ever made in investing has happened when we let our emotions influence our decision. And I'm going to tell you about the most costly one that we have ever had. So several years ago, um, we lost all of our investing nest egg, which at the time was a little less than $70,000. And it was devastating. Um, so we had heard about this company called Horsehead Holding, which was a producer of zinc and nickel products that's located in Pittsburgh because a lot of the value investors that we follow were investing in it. We had this really strong thesis that the company was undervalued because there was like a bunch of circumstances and opportunities for the company to grow really quickly and beat out all of their competition. We literally thought that we were going to 10x our money and we completely allowed our emotions to overcome our brains. We were overly excited about the potential growth. We were desperate for the share prices to rise so that we could quit our jobs at the time. And we were super greedy thinking about what we would do with all that money in our bank account. We ignored pretty much every rule we had ever made for our own investing strategy. Long story short, the company unexpectedly filed for bankruptcy and our shares all went to zero overnight. To this day, there are still some lawsuits going on about the situation. We definitely weren't the only ones who lost on that one, um, and a lot of people feel like some shady stuff went down that cheated and misled the public. But regardless of that, for years, it would upset me to think about the situation. But now, looking back, I honestly think that it gave us the best lesson and that we needed to learn it. We've now made back that loss and a lot more, but because we made that mistake, we will never let our emotions rule our investments again. Now it's six years later and I'm happy that we didn't let that loss stop us from continuing to invest because even though it's super cheesy, I think that it's a really good example that even when you make mistakes, you can always come back from it and find success. Taking control of your financial future isn't something you should do. It's something that you have to do. I hope that you found this video useful and I hope that you don't let the fear of making a mistake hold you back from achieving your financial goals. If you like this video, you might like these videos. Remember, earn more, spend less, and invest the rest. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.